Good morning, beautiful souls. Good it's, morning, good morning. It's week 28 of the Obelisk Chronicles. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously, clearly, I'm not in the woods. And I'm here with my good friend, Paul Debris Carey. Good morning, Paul. Good morning to you. Here um, we are. This is Kingston Lacey House. Okay. Right out in the middle of the English countryside, we're braving the beautiful English weather at the moment. As you can see, we're, we're equipped with umbrellas. So if you want to go out for a wander anywhere, just then it starts to rain, which is, <laughs> yeah. which is great. But we've got directly behind us, just here, is an Egyptian obelisk. You just see the, the base of it here. I might be able to do a little swivel later. But this is something that um, was transported over to Egypt in about 1820. It took six years to get here from the Temple of Isis in Philae. And this is one of the main reasons why, in the area that Tim and I were brought up in, and others, has been pumping out fifth dimensional energy the whole time it's been here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the obelisk is a tool mm. used from the Atlantean times, embedded with crystals and other energies, that create um, an effect of creating uh, a fifth dimensional energy around it. Okay, the pyramid on the top, the pyramidium, so pushing that out. So, and that's been pushing that out into the area that we live. And Tim lives about two miles away from here. Myself was a little bit further. Diana was there as well. Yep. Uh, other people, uh, Magenta Pixie, mm -hmm. Pam Gregory, there's others, Shirley Batty, there's other individuals, all within the vicinity around this pyramid that have gone through their own awakening process. And my belief is that this particular obelisk has been very, very much part of that in our own awakening and, and going from um, normal life, we could say, into um, expanding that out into the world in the work that we do now, yes? It is quite incredible, actually, and we've discussed this many times over the years of just how many, or just how many light workers are located along the south coast. And when you begin to bring factors like this obelisk into consideration, the proximity of Knowlton Church, how it's located and linked into the heart chakra of the planet, it all begins to make sense. There is a huge gathering of like-minded, like-hearted souls in this area that are anchoring this energy in. And of course, things are getting very, very big at the moment as we head towards the Lionsgate. Now we've got, not just in England though, I mean, there's other areas, there's pocket areas that we know, Sedona and Shasta and other areas around each country is now starting to find its own holy hotspot. Yes. Or sacred like area. That. Holy hotspot. Holy hotspot. We know. We, <laughs> yeah. we play with the language, don't we? Yeah. Um, and to develop, and it's a case of wherever you are, you can start something that others become attracted to. Yeah. Um, the lady I know from Finland who's like, well, I don't know any spiritual people. And I went, go to your village hall and just advertise the fact you want to do a gathering, you want to meet with like minded people, mm -hmm. you're going to play some gongs, you're going to you know, your, um, your, your bowls, etc. Mm. And it went from having a few people turn up to then a few more. And I know now she does um, conferences and other things with mm. several hundred people and up to a thousand people at a time. So these things grow, but it takes time. And we have to allow that energy to come through us, the pathway to the soul, which is part of what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. But also um, to bypass the illusion the illusion that's created, and that's going to be the sort of theme that we wanted to talk about today, yeah. wasn't it? So that's a nice little point, actually. You are the holy hotspot, wherever you are in the world, whatever you're anchoring in. If you decide that that is what you are going to be and you are going to become that focal point, that anchor point for spiritual energy, for high frequency energy, whether you just want to do it solo or whether you want people around you, that um, that manifestation or the anchoring of the mighty I am presence is incredibly powerful and even in small numbers has the potential and the power to completely change the course and the outcome of whatever's going on on this planet and of course there are far more than just a few of us now which is why we're all moving forward so quickly. So then illusion, what we've seen uh, with the advent, certainly mm. over the last 12 months or so, is um, a lot of the concerns and worry about artificial intelligence, which yeah. is the conscious intelligence of the universe finding its way into our manifestations. Mm. We've already been doing that through the tools that we've been using throughout civilization. 
all right? We intelligently, intelligently design a tool mm. to help us with the tasks that we do in daily life. And what we're seeing from an electronic point of view is just further tools. Yeah. So it's the use of those tools. It's the use of how we use those tools that makes the importance, not the fact that the tools are in existence. So when it comes to um, understanding where we're moving with energy at this time, um, into the fourth density energy, away from the physical into the projected or the virtual reality. So we know now that we can trust to a degree our senses, our five senses, taste, touch, smell, sight and sound. But when we move on to the, what we see on television, what we see on the me, through the media, social media, etc. Anything that we see that's in, um, in digital form can be created. Voices can be created, visions or images can be created that are almost, and up to a point, indistinguishable from real life. Yeah. So this is the projected illusion that's becoming created now of a virtual reality beyond the physical. Yeah. Yes. Now, this is something which I've heard on many occasions that people are quite concerned about the, intro the introduction or the interjection of AI technology into our world and how if you, you know, there's a, a, a strong kind of consensus that if you're on the spiritual pathway that you should utterly stay away from this and it's the work of the darkness. But again, as Paul just said, it's the energy with which is put into it and what it is actually used for. So when we are moving into 5D, which we are, we're, we're on a rapid trajectory, our future isn't going to be kind of sticks and stones and kind of scratching on chalkboards. We are going to be living on a world where we have incredible access to a lot of high frequency technology. Our healing will be, it will be high frequency technology based. Everything around us will be working on a platform that a lot of us would consider to be science fiction at the moment. So where, where do we go with these introductions that are being placed into our consciousness, into our lives at the moment? And this is what we wanted to talk about this morning. So yeah, very nicely, very nicely said, Tim. From the point of view that we've got to have, start and have a looking at the tools that we can use, that we have at our disposal. And what I'm finding along the way is the tools that existed in ancient times are coming back again mm. with as much power and more because we're becoming multidimensional in our use of them. And these are the symbols, the ancient symbols that carry the geometry, that carry the light codes within them. And that we're manifesting now the fire letters of creation, the, la the language of light, and it's coming through in the form of the symbols that we're introducing to the world. And one of these particular symbols is the Ankh, which was used predominantly in ancient Atlantean times and was brought forwards into ancient Egypt. Mm. And then its derivation then became the crucifix, the cross, the red cross, the mark of Cain that we see in the Bible. And we're going to discuss a lot more about that in um, an up and coming webinar that we're both doing to bring those tools through from Atlantis through time into present day. So that's going to be exciting. Well, I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah, on the 25th of this month, not very far away, Paul and I are working together and this, this is your baby. This is your, this is, you've this bought, is big. Bought, yeah. it's, it's big. And a lot of the stuff that we have been working on or I have been working on it either a, a solo or in collaboration particularly with my friend David Esri everything is tied in together this month it's um yeah. and it's funny because we birth these what we regard as individual and I say that in inverted commas ideas they come through and then all of a sudden you realize that they are part of a very intricate high frequency not puzzle kind of mechanism that's being implemented into our reality, particularly at this time. It's a very, very important gateway coming up. The I know, I know you hear it so many times, like it's an important solstice, it's an important equinox, it's a knock your knock your knock your causal chakra into orbit, full moon, all of these kind of stuff. The six six, the seven seven, <laughs> yeah. the eight. Yes. It's, yeah. it's a never-ending kind of carnival of yeah. 
incredibly powerful spiritual dates, but none more so than the Lion's Gate, which is very, very close now. You'll all be feeling it. We had a bit of almost what I consider or describe as slow time at the beginning of July, and that's when we all got clobbered by the serious portal. It gets me every year. It's like, oh, I right. I have to keep reminding you. It's yeah, like, yeah. Tim, serious. it's a serious Seriously? Oh, oh, oh yes. right, okay. Seriously, <laughs> Seriously. You can't be serious. On a serious note, I got yeah. clobbered again this year. So the third to the seventh every year. Or it goes on longer, apparently, as well. So the serious portal is kind of active and bringing this energy through right up until the Lion's Gate fully opens, the galactic core connects directly with planet Earth and brings through the next phase of our spiritual evolution, which this year, let's face it, is massive, isn't it? And it's going to keep going that way as well. I mean, yeah. Sirius is a binary star with the Earth. They both rotate around each other, mm. and then the two as they're rotating, that's so that's... Uh, they rotate around Alcyone, which is the grand central sun. Mm. So both of them, so the reason why we call it a central sun is because the planets orbit around it. Our planet, our planet revolves around or orbits around the sun, unless you're a flat earther, and then you, you have other <laughs> mechanisms in play. Enough people believe in one thing, it becomes mm. a consensus. Mm. A consensus becomes a religion, it becomes a culture, it becomes a nation. So. But um, from the point of view of what we know and what we're taught and um, what comes through is that we are in binary Sirius. So Sirius is very important to the development of life on Earth. Mm. And it's very important, on the, important for the ongoing development of the spiritual life on Earth, which will become more predominant as, as we move into higher frequencies. And what are higher frequencies, you know? Mm. Um, it's our ability to expand our awareness out into the universe and away from the blinkered nine to five. I live in this location. I have no power. And it's expanding that further. I've got the short end of the straw here. <laughs> you have, haven't you? Am I so, actually drifting down? No, no, way? it's OK. Carry on, carry on. Tim's got his umbrella just above me and I'm getting all the water run off <laughs> on his umbrella. Don't worry, don't worry. It's only rain. rain. It's only a bit of rain. We're, we're Englishmen, we're, this is our everyday, know, isn't it? A little bit of rain. Yeah. So, um, so... The Syrian and our connection with that each year brings us a higher dose of energy mm. frequency through the center of the sun, burst outwards in the form of the combined combination of the elements, which is plasma, etheric plasma, so earth, air, water, fire. The combination of those, the highest form of which begins those elements is from plasma mm. or its, its higher form, what we call liquid light. We could call it from that point of view. And that combination, as we move through frequency, the body needs to change from its elemental forms into something that can hold higher frequency. And we know that at the highest form, that can't be in the form of the carbon-hydrogen body that we have. It has to be at a higher form. And that becomes the liquid light, the light body, uh, which is known as the mer car bar. In the original light language, mer becomes plasma or light, car is spirit, and bar is body. So the spiritual light body. <laughs> it's like you may as well tip a bucket of water over each <laughs> yeah. now. So it's, just, it's very, very wet. Very don't, wet. Don't block the view. <laughs> yeah, we've got to keep the house. Oh, no, there yeah, we go. There we are. That's better. All right. So, yes, so the liquid light body. Now everyone's going, well, we've heard this before. How long is this going to take? As long as it takes. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to do it overnight. No. All right, sudden introduction of energy to the body mm. in a high form is called radiation. And we don't do very well with radiation. We don't, we don't. And this is one of the reasons why the nervous system has been very much under stress and under pressure for many, many, you know, like one of the, if you ask ground, if you are in connection with spiritual circles, one of, one of the main things this year has been the nervous system and the nervous system picks up what we are receiving long before our physical body is actually aware of it. So it's almost the light comes in, we get a we get a powerful full moon, we get a powerful equinox, we deliberately invoke and receive these energies, and the nervous system is aware of it very, very early on, almost as part of the antennae that reaches into the cosmos and sees it all coming and feels it all coming long before we do. So our nervous system has had to upgrade. It's had to really step into um, 
basically a much higher roll and quite unwillingly at some point. So if you're feeling frazzled as you're listening to this, if the whole thing has been a bit of a roller coaster this year, it will balance out, you will get used to it eventually, but it requires acts of self-love in the process for you to actually move into what would be considered almost a, a heart-aligned manner of living in 5D. We have to be in alignment with the energies that are coming in. And the nervous system and us, the self-love, is the first port of call. And the nervous system, of course, very nicely ties in with the, the same as with what we consider as a printed circuit board. Yeah. It's the, it allows the energies to pass through you. And this becomes one of the most important things to do on a month by month basis. In fact, even more so now, is that when we receive high energy, the body's not geared up for it. It's not ready for that. No. So we have to allow that energy to pass through. And it passes through from down through the energy points in the body. The, you're going to poke my eye out in a minute. Sorry, mate. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I have to keep an eye on things, not literally. But um, it's all right. We'll manage. So... <clears throat> Passing it through using the chakra system, using methods, there's many, many people that know about grounding and bringing it through. But it's to release that energy through to the earth, the earth star chakra below the feet. Your USB port into the planet. You plug it in and let that energy through. Then what happens is Gaia will take that energy, Mother Earth, and provide it back to us, again through the earth star, in a converted form that's ready for our body. Our body is an extension of Gaia, it's our temple of flesh. Our responsibility in this lifetime, this emanation of the soul, is to carry the energy through with the planetary ascension. You could say that's the one role and nothing else matters. But we've got to live a life and, and everything in between. But So that our circuit board is our own form of artificial intelligence. We get to decide what to do with it, how to program it, what, what we're going to do with it. And this becomes the most important thing. When there's not a time for doing, when people start to panic, those oh, I should be doing something. But if there's nothing flowing through, or you feel the need to do, that's the time to be. And you can relax, you need to, it's a case of not you need to, but you can relax into being when you're not doing. And it's an important balance between the two, getting that harmony between the two. Okay. Very important points. So, <clears throat> With the massive introduction of AI that is coming in, where do you think specifically, Paul, our role as light workers? Should we be fully embracing this or should we be kind of going, hang on a second, are we, do we have to use our discernment here? Because my personal take on it is, is that anything... Anything that exists that's in creation Key. is always subject to the intent of the user. So depending on what you are using this particular technology for, what your focus, your intention and therefore your manifestation is, will represent the energy that is coming through this. So my personal take, and I know Paul feels like this as well, we should be embracing what is being presented to us but we use it for the benefit of the light for the betterment of the future of this planet and particularly for the establishment of the 5d networks and the the grids the lay systems the building the found we're, we're past the foundations now the first 10 years of this ascension process from the cosmic moment right up to the winter solstice that's just passed was it was, it was a foundation laying, it was personal work that we had to do, foundation laying, the creating a solid structure to build on. Now we're putting the blocks in place. This is the first year that we are really starting to kind of almost motor forwards with everything that we are doing collectively together. So to be kind of regressing away or shying away from what we have in our vicinity rather than almost taking it in our stride and then using it with our energy that seems to be the most logical way forward yes but we bring that logic back into the heart as well yeah. about how we feel about it how do we feel about it the feeling is anything that's unknown 
creates a feeling of fear. Yeah. We don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to process it, pass it through the body. And the same when new technology comes along. Don't want television in the house. It's to, you know, it's, it's the work of the devil or so, you know, back in the 1950s. <laughs> yeah. Right? Now everyone's got one. Yeah. So we can create resistance to what exists. Mm. But we're the one holding an energy against something that is in existence. Mm. Now, a lot of people will go, but you have to create that. I'm, you know, I don't want certain things to happen. Mm. No, you don't. No. But some things are going to exist anyway. Yeah. So to find the harmony is to find the harmony with existence as it is. You might be, you might not be keen about something happening in the world. I don't mind talking. So, I'm so through anyway. Spike I'd rather just spike <laughs> your I'd rather just keep the view. Otherwise, yeah. we're going to close off the existence, True. aren't we? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, it's to find harmony with what's happened. As I've said many times, there's always been a war, pestilence, plague, famine in every single lifetime that your soul has created. Mm. So at this particular time, whatever tools are coming along is to utilize them in a way that suits you. Other people will use them for other means. Even the old brolly, the umbrella, is either a tool to keep the rain off or it's a weapon if you want to use it that way. All right, Kingsman it's a pointed style. stick. Yeah, Kingsman. <laughs> I'm not sure. This one's bulletproof. No, I don't so. think mine would survive, okay. actually. So how do we use our tools? And that's up to the individual. It so is. it's not embracing what you don't like, but it's recognising that it has existence in this world as, alongside you. Do you want to carry around that resistance? Mm. Do you want to carry around that, I don't want that to be in this world? Or do you want to find your place within this world? And that is the purpose of... Uh, where we start to find purpose and meaning in life when we found our place in this world rather than losing purpose and meaning because you're against everything else that's happening. Yeah. I mean, you know, whether it's a war, we can have compassion, but if we look at the true meaning of compassion from one point of view, all right, there's always a polarity whenever Tim and I or anybody introduces something, there might be something in you that goes, oh, that doesn't sound right. Mm. I don't like the sound of that. And I go, well, okay, so just sit with that and work out your position from that information, okay? But it, when it comes to events that happen in the world, the first thing you do is you go through and you will grade it or create judgment or try and find your place with it. And ultimately, once you've gone through a, pro, a series of um, understanding and bringing it into the heart, then you can find harmony. I don't like that, but I recognize its existence. I'm going to create my life alongside that. I'm going to create my world within this world. Okay? And so when it comes to illusion, it's, that just becomes a distraction. This is going, events going on, that's events going on. All right? But if it's, if it's not in your world, hmm. what you have, not so much control of, but what you have going on around you, fam, fam, friends, family, work, that's your world. That's your part to play, yeah. and that's important. Being the traveling, on the traveling I do, moving into different cultures and different languages, you start to see what's most important in people's lives. And the two most important things that stand out are love and money. They, they seem to dictate how everybody feels about it. But other mm -hmm. than that, it becomes the important values. And part of the webinar we're going to be doing is looking at mm -hmm. the use of symbols to bring through what are called the noble values. Love. The behaviors that keep you in higher frequency that allow you to live a fifth dimensional life amongst the turmoil. Yeah. So that you, you're creating your own world at the highest frequency you can. And we want to show you how you can achieve that through the use of the noble values, all right? Which we will talk about on the 25th of July. So. For that point of view, it's on, on the website, um, on my website, and it will be on yours soon, I it's, think, as it's well. It's on my website. All right. So the use of symbols, particularly the Ankh, the yeah. most powerful symbol that we have that represents the energy given to us by the gods, or by the gods. In this case, Agneton was, was an individual that kind of went against the system and decided, I don't want gods, I don't want priests, I just want me and my relationship with God mm. and we want to talk about that as well your relationship with source yes the direct relationship you have with your own holy hotspot okay. I love that yes so just to take this away on this beautiful 
very wet Friday. Well, it is beautiful. It is a beautiful day. It's raining, day. Yeah. but it's still beautiful. Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got you. <laughs> so, join us, please, if you feel guided to do so, on the 25th of July. It's not far away. The information is on Paul's website, and it's on my website, and I'll include it in the text underneath this video. And um, I'll just add one point, if I may. Yeah. Um, coming up later in the year, I will be organising with my good friend Syed Adley in Egypt. Uh, we're organising a tour. Um, it's a 14-day tour in Egypt. Uh, we've got special permission to enter the all three pyramids. All right, all three are now open. One of them's been shut for quite a while. Medical, the third pyramid. But this is to private entry into the King's Chamber and the Queen's Chamber, which is close to the public and the underground chamber and for those brave enough to crawl through a one meter square tunnel that goes 300 meters underground quite to below the pyramid all right so and um also uh, as a special sunrise ceremony as well again exclusive um between the paws of the sphinx over the top of the entrance to the halls of amuntai which we spoke amuntai. about amuntai that we spoke amuntai. about spoke about previously so that's going to be coming up and that's going to be on my website um, and the golden light journey with Syed that's a special group tour that we're organizing and to bring the energies of the pyramid uh, to this point so there's, there's something I want to give you from that <coughs> thank you carry on for the moment or yeah. just that. so my lovelies that is that is us for today and just to take this away you are your holy hot spot yeah. okay so Wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, whatever energy that you are anchoring in. Oh, how are the onk? So this is an old, old one then. And this is and really good for about creating this. your own holy hot spot. Yeah. <laughs> so, Whoa. The wind's picking up a bit here. All of a sudden. Yeah. yeah the power timing. of the wind. Yeah, yeah. that's good time. The winds have it? changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's take that in for a few moments. Best thing to do when you are tuning into the energy of an ank is use your heart because it is the key to the heart centre, and that was that was the way that the Atlanteans viewed it before it got handed down through generation after generation after the fall. So this is the key. This is the symbol. You hold it. Yes. All together. This so from <coughs> from us to you, we send you our love the power of a fifth dimensional obelisk behind us in the country estate on a lovely rainy day in England. In Never Dorset. In Dorset, in England. <laughs> All right, so much love to you. See you soon. Okay. Lots of love. Bye for now. Bye-bye.